Howdy folks, LP Guru signing back in for the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In this case, episode 3. We're picking up where we left off. Previous episode and I will try to conclude my story time in as concise of a manner as possible. But yes, I had I'd always been looking forward to playing the original Final Fantasy. At the time, I believe my very first experiences with Final Fantasy were Final Fantasy V and Final Fantasy VI. And uh, I think I think at that point in time, both of those games were in the anthology collection for the PlayStation One. And I honestly can't remember when that collection released. You know, the, the exact year. But I want to say that I played them both before I played Final Fantasy 7 even though 7 was released before Anthology I think I was a few years delayed on acquiring 7 so 5 and 6 were my first experiences with the entire franchise and I abs absolutely loved both of those games so I definitely wanted to play the original but at that point in time there was no there was no way to okay like I say Final Fantasy Origins wasn't released until 2003 the original game, Final Fantasy 1, didn't exist in any other format aside from on the original NES. So I was in that weird waiting period, so once this collection was released, though, I knew that I had to get it, and I did not regret that purchase. Like I stated in the previous episode, this one game starts it all. For everything else that's experienced in in later, you know, Final Fantasy games, there's so many staples, so many really basic things. I'm gonna be brave and not cast any kind of magic in this. <laughs> Roll the dice and see what happens. I didn't, I didn't live to regret that decision. <laughs> but no, there's, there's just so many things that were first started in this game that continue on, that live on in future Final Fantasy games. And I'm just, so it's really cool to go back and be able to see where it all started. And if you ask, if you ask any gamer, even, even someone who isn't an avid RPG fan, but if you ask any gamer, you know, what, what the classics are, Final Fantasy 1, it's always somewhere in that list. Not necessarily saying it's number one, 
put us in that list somewhere. Garland is the very first boss fight. And just treat him like you would any other fight you've been in. But as you notice, he takes a lot less, or yeah, takes, receives, same difference. <laughs> it takes more to damage him. Super important, just play it with the crazy horse fights. Super important to get shield put on both of your spellcasters. And once that's in place, you just keep on attacking. It sure did well. No need to actually do it in this fight, but sometimes there's a need to restore hit points, but there wasn't that time. That's one of the reasons why I try to be a level five. It, I mean, it's it's debatable as to whether or not it makes the boss fight too easy. I have I have been at a higher level than five, and I'll say I'll say this much that that does make that boss fight way too easy but I have had sometimes even at level 5 where Garland has gotten in some like really nasty critical hits and I think he has knocked out one of my characters before even at level 5 so that's why I say it's, it's just a safe level to be at because once again Everything, it's unpredictable. Now, if you want... If you want a challenge, I think the most challenging... experience I have had with that fight... I think I was at level th 3. Yeah. And like I said, that's a real challenge. You pretty much will run out of out of um, out of MP. It will be so busy restoring health. But it really just comes down to each player's preference. I can guarantee you future boss fights won't be that easy.
now that Princess Sarah has been safely returned. What is it to watch? A fancy cutscene. The king honored his word, and he did have the bridge to the north rebuilt. So we have successfully rescued his daughter. And now the real adventure. That was a nice little added touch. But now that that little scene has come to an end, I'm going to go back and save our progress. Because to the north of the bridge. Summon the monsters encountered there. Make everything that's been encountered so far look like child's play. So, if ever there's a time to spend your money and save your progress, it is now. an update to both save files so that we can stay current. I think the next town we're heading to, I 
think this name is Provica. Because, again, I think, I think if you talk to certain individuals, I can't remember if the king is one of them or not, but speaking, speaking to certain people, will tell you the direction that you need to head in. I mean, I remember, but I'm just trying to find trying to find the person in this town that will actually say it for anyone who hasn't played this game before there is actual direction <laughs> in the game it's not it's not super cryptic the game does actually actually provide you with direction but Again, since this is the starting town, this particular town may not give you that direction because since this is the very start of the game, it's like, well, there's only one one direction you can go from here, so you know, it's kind of like it's self-explanatory, so that, um, that information may not, may not be in this in this town and if not that's okay but normally if you can find people like this that are in robes and like a wizard's hat they can they can provide you with some pretty good information Yes, there we go. Once I finish reading this, yeah, this is one of the people that kind of gives you a little bit of direction. Alright, and I should be back. I am. I'll have to go back and see when exactly the live commentary dropped out on this one. What I've been saying uh, um, with, with this fight is that <laughs> enemy encounters north of the bridge do not play around and do not be afraid to cast magic because you also earn 
a lot more money on these fights than you were in the past. So if you need to go back to the inn and rest up and everything on a, on a more frequent basis, you are earning enough money to where um, th there's no there's no shame in doing so, and yes, this is definitely one of those crazy times. I'm gonna get some really good experience out of this, but it also has a lot of risk factors. Let's just see. If we can survive this one, shall we? But it's super helpful though when the majority of them can be put to sleep. Yeah, you just keep on attacking my warrior. Doesn't, that doesn't bother me any. He's the one I'd rather you go after. Just like you all, I am waiting with bated breath <laughs> to see how things will end. We got 47 experience for each. That's a good little cash in. If I could just get in five more fights like that, that would be a level up. And as always, restore and your health. And this is also going to be another rinse and repeat kind of moment. Doesn't matter how many times I play this game, I go about it in a very similar fashion. It's just the way the game is made. There's no two ways about it. You can't get around it. The difficulty factor is always there. Always, always a little bit of slow going when you first get to a new area. But typically speaking, once you have gained about three levels, I'm not saying that you can travel to the heart of the most dangerous areas in a new region, but I am saying that you can safely travel from the previous town directly to the new town without needing to backtrack and stay at the previous towns in but like right now you have to push your luck just a little bit and come back to this area to get in fights that are worthwhile otherwise you're going to be staying in situations that were not situations but you're going to be getting in fights that are giving around like 10 experience you know each fight and know that that takes too long to level up just one time you gotta you gotta take some risk sometimes Oh, 
abilities. Make sure to keep your eye on your remaining MP. My general guidelines, not saying this is, you know, the gospel truth, so to speak, by any means, but what I try to do is when I know that my remaining MP has dropped to half of its max value, and especially if it's fallen to below below that, you know, the half value. I will go ahead and start heading back towards towards town to rest up. Because you know you're going to get into at least one more fight before you reach town. And if at least one of those fights is in the new territory, you're definitely going to need to make sure you have, you know, MP left over. Alright, so everybody needs another 126 experience points to level up. is always the age-old debate, but I would rather err on the side of caution and rest up when I know that I have plenty of MP than to push my luck too much. Because as stated in one of the previous episodes, it's never fun to have made it some kind of progress even if you haven't really gained a full level but you're over halfway there and it's still no fun to have a game over and then have all of that progress to make over again and trust me trust me on this as we make it further into the game Leveling up will become a slower process, so I'm definitely not trying to have, you know, like to base each episode off of like X number of level ups, like, you know, gaining five levels in an episode. Okay, it's time to end the episode. No, <laughs> not that at all, because, you know, if that were the case, there'd be some episodes where no one would level up at all. So you just have to play it safe sometimes. And, and yes, it does get to be very frustrating after a while. Just kind of with the territory, but there's certain parts of the game where it, it's going to feel like next to nothing was accomplished. I'm not saying in the entirety of the episode, just at the at the the rate of leveling up. So I assume like not a lot has happened. But nothing I can do about that. <laughs> I didn't make the game, I didn't develop it, it's just you just have to be you know, you just have to be careful. I mean, just, there's certain parts of, of the game where enemies are super powerful and they are life-threatening. So you just have to take what you can get and and be happy about it. You know, there's a there's a reason why. My very first time playing this, it took me only about half of my summer break from school to beat this game. But it was a very accomplishing and, and satisfying and rewarding feeling. You 
this game will definitely separate the men from the boys, the women from the girls, and not for the faint of heart, and it's also not for the impatient either. Yes, there's a huge difference between watching someone else play a video game and playing the video game yourself. But... RPGs are one of those types of games where it doesn't matter what you throw at the game, you are only going to advance and progress at whatever rate the game was designed you know, to allow you to advance and progress at. But right now, I'm not playing at this any differently than I have ever played it. Just the nature of the beast. But, like I said before, once you gain a few levels, then it's easy to level up. I mean, it still takes some time, but each fight goes by at a faster rate. Eventually, the warrior will be taking this creature out in a single hit. We're not at that point yet, but we will be eventually. But another added bonus about level grinding and trying to stay slightly ahead of things is how much money, how much gill is saved up. We're currently at 2,346 gill and that will come in handy when we reach Provica because things are expensive but we've been saving up. The war wolf is one of the enemies that put to sleep. I am definitely happy with that. Got another level up or two. All of all of the enemies encountered in this fight will no longer pose a threat.
And now we can go in and look at what our next requirement is. Alright, yeah, right under 600. 588 experience points required. And yes, it keeps increasing quite a bit, but <laughs> I always remind myself that a normal mode is even more than that. No joke, it would be probably close to, if not a little over, 2,000 experience points required just to level up. So, definitely something to keep in mind. Now, ogres are a threat. They are the equivalent of the crazy horse. that before we had restored, well not restored, but before we had rescued Princess Sarah. It sounds like this you have to make that active decision on. You know, am I going to cast a protective spell on my other spellcaster, or am I going to replenish um, someone's hit points and yes that's a very nice amount of experience and one thing you may have noticed is that the warrior hit two times and I believe that level s seven is that where we are or am I just making that number up let me look Okay, it is level 7. I wasn't sure. Level 7 is the first level where the hit count increases for the warrior. I don't know all the different thresholds, but there's multiple threshold level thresholds throughout the game where it increases. The same will be true for the monk. But I'm honestly not sure about any any of these spellcaster jobs I'm not sure if they are considered the same or not if they if they are I just I just honestly do not remember now that we're in Provica it's time to well First things first. You gotta outfit yourself with upgraded weapons and armor. Everything's parameters. And even though there's only a one a one point difference between the broadsword and the battle axe, the broadsword is the best of all three weapons for the warrior. It has well, it doesn't have the highest attack accuracy, you know, hit accuracy. This one does. But the trade off is its attack power is only 10. Whereas the broadsword is 15. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that this weapon shop is just for the warrior. But there's a point in that, there's a, a method to the madness and all that. Each shop, as we progress through the game, will cater to different characters, different jobs. Not not every single time, like it's not going to be a constant theme, but there's a few different towns where that is true, and this is the first of them.
That comes in a lot of, a lot of good use for fitting in all the fights we've been in. Everybody, a pair of leather gloves. I believe, yeah, that's, that's everything. So, Provokhood's pretty much a town for <laughs> warriors. There we go, accuracy. I can't remember if I'd actually used that word or not a few minutes ago, but yeah. Broadsword's very nice for accuracy. And if you notice, each time you get armor that has higher defense parameters, the evasion stat drops. But that's understandable because it simply means the armor is heavier. It has to be heavier, so obviously, and of course, the heavier something becomes, the slower it moves and the slower it moves the less likely it is to be able to evade get out of the way of something so as we progress through the game our warrior is going to be pretty much guaranteed to always be hit <laughs> poor guy but his armor will always guarantee that he doesn't take too much damage but on the flip side you know where he's going to be very very strong against physical attacks he's not going to be very strong against spells and the magical damage magic based damage but that's a whole nother story for another time much, much later into the game. Thankfully, we don't have to start factoring in those parameters just yet. Alright, so lamp cures darkness. Silence prevents foes from casting spells, which is very, very handy. Some of these spells you won't need until a little bit later in the game. Invisible and it raises evasion by 40 points, so. That's where you gotta, you got to weigh things out. You're only allotted three spells. Now you can always remove one later, buy a different spell later as well. So if we got three, you know, all three right now, that would be 750. So that's another, another deciding factor. You always want to take things into consideration and save. and save money so that you can evenly distribute it to all of your characters. So right now we're going to be able to get a little bit of something for everyone. This is really the first of the magic shops that really make you think. Mm 
and I really am thinking about this right now. I'm not just <laughs> delaying time, I really am wanting to end up because I know that the lizard creature in this area is weak to ice as it's pretty much any reptile related creature. This spell will be renamed to Blind in, in future Final Fantasy games. But I think its success rate is, is, is relatively low. Alright, so I'll just start off with Ice 1 and Slow 1. of everything that could be bought those are the best ones now debating on if I should go ahead and rest up or not we have everybody has plenty of MP But some of the monsters right here, right around this town, are capable of inflicting the um, poison status ailment. Right now, we don't have the means to remedy that with magic. So I'm going to run over here to the item shop. See if they have antidotes. They do. And by four. See if I can get in a few more fights. Try to level up one more time. We have, we have, we're kind of in that, that weird space with the remaining time of the episode. Like, there's not, there's enough time for a fight or two, but there's not enough time for but there's not enough time for the key story related events. I will settle for this and see if I Yes, yeah, so at this point in the game where you start to encounter fights that are like a, a mixed bag. They start, you know, like the, <laughs> they, the developers in a general sense, they start combining a lot of different 
enemies that you've encountered earlier in the game, they start combining them into single fights just like this. So it's a great way to earn experience, but you really have to stay on your toes. You really have to remember which of the enemies out of this variety, which ones deal the most damage. This is one of those kind of fights where it's super important to pay attention to such things. Super important to make sure that that each character is attacking the appropriate enemy. So one more attempt and see, okay, and just, just wolves, so, no threat here, no threat here, and the amount of remaining MP will probably probably determine that this will be the last fight I did in before saving progress. Because I had to remind myself that we have traveled all the way from Cornelia to Provica, and it would be a definite shame if I allowed myself to be wiped out and have a game over at this point. Alright, dude, not the way. Really? Come on. Let me in! Get out of my way! Let me into the inn! Alrighty. No. Rest up. Save our progress. Take a little bit of a break. Then I'll dive right back into things with episode four. But as always, thank you all so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you all in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. LP Guru, signing out.